All right, so let's start with albumin. Um, and, and I'm gonna go through every one of the nine variables uh, on the list. And I wanna mention that obviously for the, for the sake of time, there's no possible way I can go through every study for each variable. So for the point of brevity, I, I'm gonna focus on the uh, biggest studies that have uh, uh, enrolled the largest amounts of subjects. These would have more uh, statistical power to identify meaningful correlations and associations when compared with studies that may have a few hundred or, or, or a few thousand subjects. For example, here in, the, in this album and study, this is a sample size that included more than 1 million subjects. So, okay, uh, the reference range for albumin is 35 to 50 grams per liter, but what's optimal? Um, so higher albumin levels are associated with biological youth, and we can see that here. So we're looking at albumin levels on the y-axis versus age. And uh, we can see the female plot, and then we can see the male plot. So males tend to have uh, higher albumin up until about 60 or 65 um, uh, than females. So what about risk of death uh, for all causes? I, actually, before we go there. So yeah, and then going forward, you can see that albumin very clearly decreases um, with age for both sexes. So what about all-cause mortality, all-cause mortality risk? So this is, a, again, a big study, uh, 1.7 million subjects. And we're looking at female mortality ratios on on, on this side, and then male mortality ratios on that side. Uh, and then the x-axis goes from higher albumin levels to lower albumin levels. So how we translate this is higher albumin here, so it would be greater than uh, 45. I have, it as, I have it in milligrams per deciliter. I didn't convert it back, but it's the same. So uh, 4.5 milligrams per deciliter or 45 grams per liter in men. And for women, greater than 44 um, would be associated with the lowest risk of death for all causes. And then each of these different data points uh, are for different age groups. Uh, so men less than 50, men or women less than 50, 50 to 69 years old and greater than 70. So what we can see is that as albumin levels uh, decrease, the risk of death for all causes increases for both sexes. So can albumin levels be optimized? So uh, I first started tracking all of my blood stuff uh, 15 years ago. And at that time, it was only about once a year. I didn't really understand the importance um, of uh, testing more, off, more often back then. So based on those approximately once a year measurements for, for about 10 years in my 30s, uh, my average albumin level is 4.74 uh, milligrams per deciliter, which translates into uh, 47. Uh, it's, it's just a unit difference, but it, yeah, it's 47 uh, grams per deciliter. So already, I don't, you know, whatever I was doing at that time, uh, you know, I was already uh, off the chart, uh, you know, with higher levels being associated with biological youth when I should have been somewhere around here. So whatever I was doing at that time, it, it was definitely on the right track. And I should say, I don't have a longevity DNA. The longest of person, uh, longest of man in my family is currently my dad who's 78. Before that, it was his dad who was 67. So I don't have longevity DNA. I wouldn't attribute this to genetics. So then in 2015, I started tracking more often. Um, I started dietary tracking and blood testing four to six times a year. So I have 23 data points now for albumin in the last five years. And what we can see is that I've been able to increase my albumin levels from the 4.74 to 4.93. And using, using T-test, these values are significantly different. So now I'm even higher off the chart than I was before when I should be somewhere here and there should have been some age-related decrease. So I've been able to resist the age-related decline uh, in albumin. So one way I'm doing that is through diet. And when looking at correlations between my diet with uh, albumin, uh, the strongest correlation is for beta carotene. And so each data point corresponds to obviously albumin levels. But then as I mentioned, I track my diet so I can look for correlations between my diet with the, uh, the biomarker, in this case being the albumin. So the correlation for beta carotene with albumin uh, is moderately strong, about 0.6. Remember a correlation of one or negative one clo as close to those extremes as possible is close to as linear as, it is a linear correlation, but it, it, it increases in strength, strength as you get closer to one. So uh, granted, it's not perfect, but it's a moderately strong correlation. So uh, I shoot for uh, about five, which is biological youth. And to get there, if you just look, go across, you can see that uh, based on the plot, around 60,000 micrograms or 60 milligrams of beta carotene should get me there. Now I don't supplement with beta carotene. Um, uh, for me, primary sources of beta carotene are carrots, orange, sweet potatoes, red, be red bell peppers, spinach, and parsley. So I eat a ton of that stuff to get enough beta carotene to, to potentially uh, keep my albumin levels high.